Welcome to Elin's Epic Morning Show! Woo! So, today I wanted to talk about a little bit about expectations versus reality, especially in traveling. Because we've all been there. We've all gone to that special be beach, waiting for that sunset, looking into the distance, only to see the trash coming ashore uh, where we're supposed to go naked skinny dipping later on. This has been sort of a daily thing for me uh, growing up in an island where tourism was the main income source for at least for my family and noticing how people come there have high expectations or expectation of things that really that place can't fulfill like it won't turn into a tropical island as much as you wish for it. It's not gonna happen, at least not until global war warming hits it a little bit harder. I've addressed this a little bit in my thesis on uh, guided ghost tours, where the idea of a place uh, affects how it's portrayed, so how people try to sell a place, but at the same time also uh, the idea of it is created by people who are selling it. So it's a bit of a loop, it's a little bit of a complicated uh, topic, mm, but I thought I would make it easier with sharing first this picture uh, that a little bit illustrates what I mean with expectations versus reality. The first picture shows you how you expect the wonderful moment at the Peace Tower to be. You alone with the tower, taking your picture, holding it up, you know. Uh, and then in reality, there are like 20 other people doing it at the same time. Uh, and it just makes it look silly. I wanted to share a little bit of an, an uh, article I read in a book called Tourism Imaginaries, uh, which was edited by uh, Noel B. Salazar and, uh, and Greyburn, I think. And basically the idea uh, in this one, art the first article in that book is about how uh, the idea of something helps uh, be to be perpetuated to, through the actions. Okay, so what happens is uh, this Rupert Stash is doing his research in Papua New Guinea with the indigenous tribe there in the jungle. And though the, this tribe is not exactly living off tourism, but it's a very, let's say, exotic tourist mm, attraction to go and see this tribe in the jungle. And it's described as, you know, they're still primitive and they live in the Stone Age and whatnot. Uh, and to perpetuate this sort of idea of themselves helps them to bring more tourism and give them more money. So what makes this a bit of a funny story is that these people come there and expect the people who live in this village to be nude. So, you know, they're not supposed to wear clothes, they're natives. So the, the locals take off their t-shirts and shorts and whatever they're wearing and, to, and put on their native outfit of some leaves or I don't know and uh, and walk around and greet the visitors and then when the visitors leave and they have gotten their money they take this money and they go to the closest city and they buy clothes for themselves because they like clothes I mean we also like clothes they also like clothes and they like to dress nicely so they go and buy their stuff in the nearest city and then um, wear that when the tourists are not around So uh, it sort of highlights the fact that we are expecting certain things when we go as tourists and then maybe those things are not really as they seem. We have sort of, uh, sort of an, an idea of places anyway and, and, I, and it's in the interest of, of the tourism providers to sort of perpetuate those ideas and I somehow think that the tour, actual tourism experience is somewhere between these imaginaries. So, uh, the ideas of what we have of a place and what we actually experience. So I think, yes, in a, in a way, I mean, if we have a strong plan of a place, it's nice that it gets fulfilled, but, but you also expect the unexpected somehow. Like, you don't want to go on a 
pre-planned tour where everything is figured out. Like you want to experience something new, that's why you go there. Visiting a place for the first time, um, you expect something new. Uh, I think it's different if you're a return tourist, so you're going to the same place over and over, you already know what you're going to get, you're probably going there because you don't want to be surprised. Um, and I guess that in the end you could you could justify that there's motivations, you know, for every tourist has its own motivations how to, to get things. But if you're thinking about most a number of people being um, going somewhere, trying something, then I think you want to sort of level this expectations with what you actually provide and sort of surprises that you could provide um, for them as well. I think why, I, why I'm more leaning towards this uh, thinking that you, you want to be surprised on your tourism experience is because I was doing my research on guided ghost tours, which is not a very typical um, topic per se, and it's a very sort of new um, idea in tourism. And and at least the people visiting these guided ghost tours, they are you know a little bit more expecting uh, something new something they didn't hear. They don't want the same guided tour over and over. They want a different one. So they expect something new every time anyway. The the tourism expectations we have. So the ideas of places that we have um, are not only coming from nowhere. Like we, ha we have shaped, we have not imagined them ourselves, uh, but they're actually shaped through what we see and what we experience in media and what we uh, sort of look out for when we plan a trip, for example. And uh, actually the tourism providers have an input also there, like we are, um, the reason you choose to go to that hotel or you, the reason you choose to go on that guided tour is because you heard something about it or it was sold to you from someone, so they already gave you some information about it so that you chose it, right? So in that case, let's say um, the idea of Africa, for example, if you want to travel to Africa, you have an idea of Africa, you're, you're thinking about the elephants and crocodiles and hippos and all these kind of animals, or you're thinking about the pyramids, or you're thinking about the Nile or something like this, or Kilimanjaro. If the tourism then in nothing cover any of these topics, well, this was what you were expecting, you're going to be a bit disappointed, I suppose. Um, but at the same time, it's in the interest of that tourism provider then to show you these things. So they're already uh, showing publicity that they are able to show you Kilimanjaro. So you go to them because you want to see Kilimanjaro and both of you are sort of showing the same thing. You have to sort of accept that, you know, tourism destinations are uh, just that, they're tourism destinations. They're, they're places to visit because of reasons. Well, I mean, it's good for the people who make the money, and is it exploitation? I mean, it's it could be worse. I mean, a guided tour is the very least consuming of, of tourism activities, I think. It's quite green. You're giving everyone a story, you're giving everyone information, which is, per se, green. It's not something you create in that way that consumes the nature or something like this. Uh, you're also guiding the people, so you're actually showing the places where um, you're supposed, to, you're allowed to go. Let's say, like there's no restricted areas. Like if you, you even grant access to areas that otherwise would be restricted. I think that it's important to sort of realize that that when you go on a, on a, on a tour somewhere, when you go somewhere to to visit places, you're not going to get the perfect picture of a place. You're going to get something a little bit bit um, different. I mean, I knew that when I went to Machu Picchu, it wasn't me alone. There was hundreds of other people who entered that day and saw the ruins. Uh, but you can still create the story of it. Like you can still uh, create the context for you so you can understand the whole picture of it. And a good way to do that is using local tour guides and uh, also building it on literature and so on. So, and these, but a good thing to remember is that these guides and these people who are creating these experiences for you are also there to sort of fulfill your expectations. So when they know what you want, it's more easy for them to actually provide that or tell you that that's not going to happen. 
So it could be a good idea that when next time when you plan your trip, when you plan where to go, talk to a local and ask and tell what you want and what the, what you actually are expecting because then it also helps to sort of uh, avoid the situation where you get there and you go like oh but this is not what I expected at all. I tried to plan some stuff stuff as well but I also tried to go there with an open mind. I tried to experience the, the place as it presents itself rather than me expecting people to be naked and them asking them to be naked for me. Uh, much rather you know see the place as it is, and then try to create the story around it for me, for me, from my personal experience of it. It was a little bit more of a short video this time, and a little bit more of a very specific topic, but um, I thought that this was a good break after the coffee I had last time. Pfft, too much. Next time, we'll see what happens. Also, Halloween is coming up, so I'm thinking maybe there will be some Halloween special coming up a bit later. Hmm. Let's see. Thank you for subscribing and see you again later. Bye.